Hi YouTube and welcome back to the channel. In this week's video we're going to cover a relatively new feature released by Snowflake in public preview at the moment called the As Of Join. We're going to cover what it does, what problem it solves, some common use cases and if you stay till the end of the video we'll cover a technical demo in Snowflake itself so you can understand how to apply it in your own environments. I hope you find it useful. So here we are in Snowflake and we're going to firstly set up our environment by creating a database called Finance. We've next got two tables we need to set up, Trades and Market Data. Trades records the actual trade itself. So we've got a unique identifier, Trade ID, the stock symbol, which identifies the stock that we're purchasing, the quantity, which indicates the number of shares that we're buying, the price, how much we bought the shares at, and then crucially, here's our timestamp column for each and every row, trade time. Market data, this table, again, has a unique ID because this is what the quotes are. This is how the market is valuing each share from these companies. Those companies, again, represented by the stock symbol. We've got a bid price and ask price, and then here's our timestamp column that we need again to use of the as of join in the second quote time. So in this particular use case, as I create those tables, we want to compare the latest quote time to the immediate trade that comes after that to look at the difference between the quote time and the trade time. Very common use case and something that we touched upon earlier. Moving on to our insert statements, and I'll just execute these and talk you through them. We've got three trades that we make for the AAPL stock, so Apple stock. Here's our quantity next to them and our values, 150, 151, 152. But notice crucially the timestamps, all on the same day, one at 9.30 in the morning, one at 9.35, and one at 9.50 in the morning. Now, if we look at our market data table and we look at our records in here, we've got quotes and we've got free records for these quotes for Apple. This at 9.29 is one minute preceding our first trade for the day. Same with this one, one minute before our second trade, and this final one is one minute before a third and final trade. Obviously, we don't want to get these mixed up because it won't give us the accurate reflection of the different quote prices and trade values that we're looking for. We want to match up the closest quote, so this one here, 9.29, to the next trade that we made at 9.30 and so on and so forth. So let's look at the trades data just to confirm it's all in there. And our market data, here we go. So we short um, amount of sample records, but it's really easy for me to talk you through that. And you should also start to grasp a real understanding of how this would work at scale. I'm going to come back to this alter session statement, which I've left in here because um, I was using it during testing. And I thought I'd leave it in there just to explain that as a bit of a bonus in a second. So here's our as of join. Select statement, nothing groundbreaking here because again, we can select columns from either of our two tables, our two tables being trade, trades and market data, which are involved in our as of join here. Crucially though, we've got our match condition and here we're looking at our trade time where it's greater or equal to our quote time in joining on our stock symbol as well as ordering it by the stock as well. So we're gonna run that and you can see our first three records are relating to the Apple. Um, stock itself. We've got our trade times of 9.30, 9.35 and 9.50. We've got our quantities there and crucially we're matching up the quotes which were generated a minute before these trades and we can see then a difference in the prices between the ask and the bid price and the actual price that we traded at. Now if we go into our quote uh, query ID by clicking the ID here, it'll take us into the query profile. And this is where we'll see quite clearly Snowflake recognizes that we're using it as of join. So regardless if you're running this yourself or it's an application running this query or another user in your environment, you'll be able to pick up what is using it as of join within your query profile. Now when I was putting this example together and testing it, I was running this query multiple times. Now when I've run this a second time, the query syntactically is exactly the same, the underlying data hasn't changed, and we're running it within the last 24 hours of the first query running, meaning then we match the caveats to use the query results cache. You will now see this in the query plan, query result reuse. And that's because we're leveraging the cache. We don't need a virtual warehouse to actually go off and retrieve the data again from disk. 
because we've seen the query before, we know what it is again. So to work around that for the purpose of testing, I can use this alter session statement, which just impacts my own session, doesn't impact anything else within the Snowflake account. Um, I can set the use cache result to false, effectively switching off and disabling the cache for my session until I kill the connection. Running this query now, this time it remains unchanged. The data remains unchanged. And if I go back to the query ID, go to the query profile, it will show me the full query plan as we saw it on the very first time. So just a little bonus there. So I hope you found this video useful. If you did, keep watching, keep subscribing. New videos coming very soon. Hey, it's Adam here and I just want to jump in real quick and just give you the latest information on the Master and Snowflake program. It's now in its third year and it's doing really well and there's more people than ever showing interest and joining the program every single day as we enter the new year of 2024. And this has been designed really for people who are quite experienced working as an IT uh, data professional. Most of the members on the program have between 10 and 15 years experience working with commercial databases, they're very comfortable with SQL and all of the different terminology that goes with data warehousing and running databases at an enterprise scale. And so these people, um, they might have scratched the surface of Snowflake, it may have intrigued them, they may have no knowledge of Snowflake, but a lot of sort of Teradata, SQL Server, Oracle on-premises experience, and they want to know, crucially, how do they leverage all of that time and money that they've invested to get to the point in their careers they are today and leverage it for the cloud with Snowflake. So I designed the program exactly for those kind of people because back in 2017, when I first got my hands on Snowflake, I was in a very similar position. I had to learn through trial and error, testing out what worked, testing out what didn't work, and then coming up with a set of recipes that really worked in Snowflake to address common real world challenges. And so once I had those, I packaged those up and put them into this program. And this program is certainly not about theory. Of course, I introduced what the, the technology and capabilities of Snowflake does. But crucially, I tell you how you can package up Snowflake's out of the box capabilities to address real world challenges. I've run through with live demos. I provide you with my code assets and templates to download and use within your own environments or use as a starting point to customize further. You'll get access to my Everest guide to help solidify some of the uh, the knowledge that you're going to um, you know, be recipient of during the program as well. So three different kind of areas to the program itself. One is the on-demand um, training portal available 24 by seven with all those downloadable assets on. It's all video content produced by myself. So you know who's delivering that. You know what the learning style is gonna be like from watching these kind of YouTube videos. It's gonna be direct, it's gonna be to the point and it's gonna be enabling you um, get the maximum value for yourself, your career, and your organizations that you're working for or working with. You'll also, as a member of the program, get access to the private members only LinkedIn group. All our members globally who join the program get access to this. It allows you to ask any questions around the course, around Snowflake. And um, that could range from interview, question and answer guidance through to other tooling. Um, such as Matillion, DVT, Elation, Power BI, you name it, you can ask the question there and I will help you to the, to the best degree I can. But of course, I don't know everything. The other members then can also join in that conversation and share their own unique set of experiences because everybody's on this journey together. Further to that, there's a weekly 60-minute group consultancy call, again, hosted by myself. You can come in and it's a different vehicle for you to ask questions and get guidance and support. Um, different vehicle than the LinkedIn group. It provides live real-time feedback. Finally, it's a one-off investment to join the program, but once you're in, you are in for life and you will not pay a single cent or penny more to get access to all future updates to the program. And the great thing is we can... Um, drop things into the program as and when we see fit based upon members' feedback or based upon new features and services Snowflake are releasing to the market, which is very frequently. Um, if you don't know, Snowflake release new features every single month to the market. So we'll apply a lens to that and work out what's publicly available to Snowflake customers and what's going to be most impactful for our members to learn. 
at this point you may be aware that I've authored a couple of books on Snowflake as well and so you get the chance to work with me and help build this community out. In the program we cover 10 modules. Within each module there are a series of lessons going into real depth in each one and we get to an advanced level of uh, knowledge. So we try to cover everything possible from a capability perspective within Snowflake. The Snowflake lessons are continually evolving, as I mentioned, as Snowflake grows and evolves as a product as well. And a great example of that is Module 10, Developing Applications in Snowflake. We've recently added a native application demos in there, so you know how actually to package up and create your own native applications. We've also got Streamlit um, lessons in there, where we hook into the Open AI API and actually query um, large language models in Snowflake. We also hook into the Snowpark API and work with Snowflake as part of those lessons. So loads of value, um, loads of great um, feedback, here's all lessons, loads of great feedback from various um, valued members who are also part of the program because as I mentioned, once you join, you're in there and you continually get value from that and it follows you as you and your career grows. Some of the people that joined at the outset three and a half years ago still have access and still get continual value today. I hope you find that useful. If you want to apply, um, it's invitation only and I review all applications personally. So have a look in the link in the video description and I'd be really pleased to welcome your application to the program.